Here, we're ready to go. I'm Jim Mackey, JC coordinator for uh, Clover and Electric. This is Dan Brady. Dan's going to do the whole thing himself today. <laughs> you know, Here, I oh, see okay. you. I see you say my voice is getting bad, yeah, but you don't rest it between. Bad. You don't rest <laughs> it between shows. He's, oh, yeah. Okay, you got questions? You got questions? Uh, some we're going to have to save till the end because we want to get this thing uh, so everybody can enjoy it uh, good enough. Other ones uh, we'll ask as we're going along. And uh, so, anyway, what we're going to show you here today basically is how our system works. Some of the things that we have in the system that relates to uh, the way your power is in front of your house, feeding your home, whatever. We're uh, taking power right now out of a uh, breaker box over here supplied by uh, Two St. Brakes, City Up. We're back feeding 120 volts into the uh, demonstration trailer here. We're going up through this disconnect box. We've got a source 120-240 back feeding a transformer. transformer not care which way they're getting their power or which way they're putting it out. If they're getting on the top side, it's coming down at 7,200 7, volts. If it's coming in on the bottom side, it's 120 to 140 volts. This uh, right now is as we follow it through, 120 comes up, feeds the bottom of the transformer, speeding out uh, 7,200 volts coming down through this fuse. He goes on to a primary lead wire out here, something like you would have in front of your house if you have overhead supply wire. It comes down, second wire down is a neutral wire. Some people uh, call it a return wire, some people think it's a, a ground wire. It's a mystery wire. It doesn't actually uh, have current on it unless there's uh, something goes wrong in the system, and then you should have current on it. There are two separate paths which it can go. We've got it set up just like we would in our distribution systems. It can either come through, down through here, which is an OCR, it's called an oil circuit enclosure. Go back up, come over down through this fuse, feeding 7,200 or 7,200 voltage up on the top side and coming back again down. 240 volts like the lake or 120 volts like the ground. Feeding this house with the lights, we know it's a house that's got a roof on it. <laughs> and it's got lights and it's got a meter. Okay, the other source it can take up here is if I pull this down, the OCR, lights go off. But if I put the fuse in, lights come back on. Second source. Boy, Dan, can you move that sun up there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've run out of one half fuses to put in the fuse, so we're going to go through the OCR. The lights are on. You're back on. Can you go one half? Jim, in the UK, we don't complain about the sun. Come to the other it's always yeah. pretty. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes when I, uh, I'm at home, the power goes off. It gets dark and I hope the power goes back on. And it does. We don't charge when the power is not on. Well, what makes the power go off in the end? Sometimes I, when I'm at my house, uh, it gets dark. And, you know, I hope yeah. the electricity comes and we try to, And we try for that not to happen. Damn! You want to sometimes in the, in the world time, the when we come out in the middle of the down, night, with all the weight. We have uh, voltage problems, we have down wires, and our uh, line crew has to come up. What we will do is we'll bring along with us a hot horn, a Salisbury tester. It tells us if we have uh, primary voltage on our line. You better be doing that, Dad. You do that? After we shut it off, it doesn't go off. That's how we can tell the line is energized or not. I've had times when I've uh, actually uh, been driving down the road in the middle of a snowstorm with this out, basically uh, out the window, and you can pick up the voltage uh, on that transformer just to see where a fuse door might be open. We might have an opening in the circuit, whatever, at that point. And uh, these things 
we did that now. No, you have a bike. bike down the road. I see down line before. I'm going to wait by my bike. I'm going to get one with my bicycle. Make sure you right? I'm on rubber tires. Firework, anything? Yeah, I'm going to go back. 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 I'm going to go Something like this would be the same as we have on our house. This meter is in circuit. If this if the uh, meter is pulled out, the lights go off and light goes off and that's going into the house like it does. We have several fire departments, people we have to warn sometimes. We have different uh, ways of measuring energy. We have like a 7-Eleven store or convenience, something at this point, a gas station, maybe a large a uh, commercial building or something. We will have current transformers and potential transformers which feed into this metering bank which tells us how much use is spent. This is not in circuit. Pull that meter out. Circuit, uh, the power is still there. I know you all want that for your house. That's not the way it is. <laughs> We've had people telling us that before. Our, our house, we got a backup meter. We got a yeah. turbine. And we got a backup meter. I'm going to have to know where that house is. <laughs> and, uh, we got a big turbine. Yeah. It feeds off our line. You do. Yeah. I want to know where that is too. <laughs> I use a lot of electricity. <laughs> I'm going to want to know where that is. Also, thank you. What's this for? An insulation. Could, uh, I'll that talk insulation to you for? later on that one. Okay. Uh, Excuse us versus OCRs. Uh, at this point, uh, no, we want to go to the burn pool first, don't we, Dan? Sure. Let's go to the burn pool. Okay. okay. For the burning tree. As long as I get to burn something, I'm happy. Okay. You want to explain to him about the burning tree? Okay. Uh, tree gets into the line and uh, it burns. <laughs> Sometimes we have trees growing up into our electric lines. Sometimes, Sometimes we have our lines that fall down into the trees. Uh, sometimes things go. And you'll notice yeah. nice little yeah. tiny smoke. Oh. It's nice. It's kind of cute. We've got little sparkly things going on up there and stuff like that. <laughs> you'll end up with uh, like an electric tree. You've got a hole burnt in the center of it. Uh, wires that burnt actually. Uh, Grown into the trees. Mm -hmm. By my way, there's a wire that means that well, I can see it smoking. Two years ago, that was a wire that was a wire that was a fire. Wow. Well, well, this is covering the picture. It's still there fire. right now. So it's important to know. I've had uh, friends and relatives try and cut trees down that were falling into uh, electric lines and uh, when they did that, uh, they called it small tingling in their arms and threw up their body and they were energized at that time. <laughs> Let us know if you see anything like this. Another thing we have is insulators. It's called a bell insulator, a uh, set of bells. We have them on our dead end pole. The dead end poles will be at the end of a line. We've replaced them now with epoxylators. They're easier to use. Uh, uh, they do a better job. A lot of these old porcelain bells were good. We did get a whole batch that were bad at one time and uh, had to replace all, throughout the whole system. Uh, these oscillators, do you have much trouble with them? I have uh, Some. Some trouble with them. They, they have, uh, they get uh, sun damage just like anything else and break down over time. Okay, with that being said, sometimes the wires, if they break down in their insulation value and stuff like this, we will get the same as that primary voltage going down and touching that pole. What do you think, Dan? <laughs> That's basically what we get. Now, point being is on something like this, if you see where we have damage to our poles, damage to our insulators, damage, tree damage and stuff like that. 
if you can call it in to us, we appreciate it. We don't, we're not everywhere all the time, but if you can call it in, take a look at that quill, see if there's some numbers and letters on that thing. Dan, tell us what NY3 is. I got Okay, the NY stands for the Newberry substation. And this is the third line that comes out of that substation. And it goes 132 spans, and then it goes down the G line, which is a line off of that, off the 32, 132 line. And it goes another 10 spans to a service pole, which is the A. We can get all that information just off of having that number. If you can tell us things like that, this pole in particular has that DR1, comes out of DAFTER, and it comes first, uh, the number one circuit out of DAFTER, the 15th pole. This is our map book, we keep them in all the trucks. If you give us that number, we can look it up and go right to that pole. Uh, get the lights on quicker that way. Really helpful to us, helpful to you. I mean, you're sitting there and you got a uh, full uh, house of people on to eat, no electricity and stuff like that. Or you got a good. We're, we're, we're trying to make dinner we can because uh, we're trying to take cars we can't get the powers off. Yeah. Or by our way, there was some, uh, I was on the way to work and see that some of the leaves are burning because some trees on fire by my way. You need to take care Call of it in and get the numbers for us. Uh, now, with that being said, sometimes. Uh, you're sitting there watching TV at night, power goes out, goes out. Uh, it stays out. What happens is probably, okay, maybe a car hit a pool, took it down, maybe a wire fell down, maybe a tree hit and knocked this thing down. Maybe the tree's laying on the wire and it's going to ground through that tree or might be laying up or push that uh, primary up against that neutral. Same as pushing it to ground. Having two different sources to go by, if you're living on a long open source where there's not many trees and there's not many customers on that line, you're probably sitting with a fuse sitting in there at that time. So uh, Dan's going to pretend he's a tree here and ground out between the between the neutral and the primary. And she popped this fuse. The fuses we're using right now are the fuses we're using are only one amp right now. If we had a three amp or a five amp or a ten amp, you guys would be jumping right now. It would be dead. Sounds yeah. like a shotgun. And uh, we can't do that. We've been warned against it. Okay, now you see the lights are back on. OCR, oil circuit reclosure. You're sitting there at night, power goes out, comes right back on. Goes out again, comes right back on. Goes out a third time, comes on and then she goes out for good. That's what this does. We're avoiding nuisance tripping. If a tree come, boom, get that, fell right down. Uh, if something happens, the bird decides to go in phase between the neutral and the primary uh, on top of the transformer. We have little critters that like to crawl around up there. And, uh, and uh, what will happen is uh, that thing will uh, go off and on three times and go to lock out. Can? Let's show us what happens. Now I want you to count. That was one, that was it, just slide through the tree. Now I'm going to hold it on. One, two, three. She tripped right out. That's why you hit those three hits. We're trying to eliminate all the nuisance tripping, and uh, uh, it happens a lot that we can eliminate it, but sometimes you just can't. If that tree stays on that line, laying on that thing, she's going to take it all three and she's going to. Uh, go into an open state and stay in an open state. One time I power went off about five times and stayed off. The next time it was five hours. Yeah. And the fridge, my fridge would have got warm. I hope the, the power goes back then. You need power. What are you going to do? Down the kite string? Fire hose? There's no firefighters. There's no firefighters. Let's do the kite string. No. A long time ago, I, a long time ago, I was going to say, it's like trying to get the giant pollen, I let go. 
Fried, right? Where, where do you do the pipe? Where you want a big line to burn it up? I like gold too. Big, big, big gold line. Don't some of the bigger mains have a longer delay between the resets? What's that, sir? And a three strike or um, the automatic reset. Some of the mains have like a longer time delay, don't they? Uh, they can set them up in different time delays. Uh, we try and set it up uh, according to what uh, we call them our US standards uh, right now. What's those orange things, Todd? Mm -hmm. That's going on the wires. Uh, sometimes I see orange things on the wires. We'll talk about that. Uh, right now, I'm going to try and show you a uh, difference. When we're using this OCR, we're going to leave it open. Uh, we're going to bridge across the two connections uh, on top. And if this is a current carrying device at this time, it's going to light those two lights up over there. Same as kids use for their kite string and assist kite string. Okay, we're across them right now, nothing's happened. We got a good, clean, dry kite string. We're good. Good thing that worked, eh, John? Mm -hmm. We'd have to give everybody their money back. Now, yeah, I'm still losing my voice, but. Wet kite string. minutes into the firefighting portion of it. We got wet hoses on the ground, they're dirty, they're filthy, people are running over them with cars. Same thing. Good conduction. Generators. How many people have generators here? Bunches. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to show you the difference on here on the. You got the Honda charter, Tim? Probably somewhere on that. Yeah. You do it. I always mess it up. Okay.
sorts of damage and all sorts of uh, problems can occur to the linemen, to your neighbors. Uh, in actuality, uh, you're not going to you're not going to energize all your neighborhood on that generator. But there could be enough there to kill somebody. Double throw switches. Uh, get a lot of the hardware stores and get enough to generate a portion of it by storing power. Uh, they cost a little bit. They cost quite a bit, I guess. I'm not sure. I haven't bought one myself. I'm not going to use a generator in that portion. But uh, they're protecting yourself, protecting us, protecting your neighbors, maybe in the, in the public. Okay, what do you want to do? The gloves, Jim? Yeah. Rubber gloves. This is what I've been wearing. Um, these have a working load, uh, load working yeah. voltage of 17,000 volts. Um, they usually will work on the power lines hot with these on. Um, we can change out an insulator or do most common uh, things. And the reason why we do that with power on is so your power stays on. Um, used to be back in the day, they would just shut it down and work on it. You can't do that. We try to keep the lines hot as often as possible. And uh, we inspect them. They go out every 90 days to be inspected by, by a company. That's what they do. It's a little odd because they're also the ones that sell us the gloves. So if they don't pass, they get to sell us a new one. But it's the only way to make sure that we are safe. Um, Could we come back to the same person? The other glove? Yeah, for the most part, uh, they do. I have two pair where one's being tested. They change it, they rotate them out. Um, what happens is, um, real close to the 90 days, package comes in the mail, and they come in a bag like this. These are sleeves when we're working on the hotline we wear the sleeves all the way up it's kind of not as something that we want to get into it but it's just safety give, give us a little bit more of the area to, to defend it. we depend on these gloves the reason we have them tested is that uh, we're up there we're working on them we've got sometimes seven thousand sometimes fourteen thousand gold sitting right in our hands right in our face whatever we're in a insulated bucket in most cases Cooking up. The reason we're doing that is we don't want people to have outages. We don't. We uh, fight ourselves and keep the people in as long as they can. Uh, when they test the gloves, sometimes they get sent back to a throw zone. Sometimes the rub marks. Uh, sometimes any number of reasons. There's been holes in them that uh, they find. And they test these things at 20,000 volts. They put them into a, a test machine. Uh, okay, this is a hot dog. I'll be a hot dog. This is going to be our finger for today. It's kind of a chubby finger, but it will work. These are uh, Nathan's best. I, I prefer cold, but Jim bought the hot dogs. They're the best they could buy. <laughs> Only the best for you, man. Okay, Dan, I'm going to let you do this because you have a problem. That and I just really enjoy doing it. You do. Okay. Working away up there and nothing happens. I get to go home to my family. Really hard to find any holes. Try to move back up and take a look. 